Hello. Let me come on Facebook and find y'all. I miss my people. I'm coming to find you. Give me one minute. I cannot take you slowly. Here we are. Hi, hi. Okay. I'm going to share this really quick. Happy New Year. Remote viewer group. Post. Hey, how are you guys? Happy New Year. What is everybody doing for the New Year's? What are you guys doing tonight? Good morning. Good morning. I'm here. I'm in, uh, I forget the name of the town, somewhere near Boston in Massachusetts. We rented a huge Airbnb and my whole family's here. It's so exciting. So you might hear a bunch of noise or people might come in. <laughs> that is what it is. Okay. I got to share this to my business page as well, really quick. And then we can get into the content. Yes. Hey, Andrea. Hi, sister. Happy New Year's. Okay. Okay, it has been shared. Hi. Hi, Jacqueline. We got a weirdo on here. Yeah. Sorry, my alarm just went off. Yay. Okay, so seriously, what are you guys doing for New Year's? What's the New Year's Eve plans? If you're part of my tribe, throw me a heart or say, hey, hey, happy New Year to you, Andrea. Throw me a heart, say hello below, tell me what you're doing for New Year's. Thank you so much. Doesn't it feel like this year is gonna be freaking epic? I just feel like this year is gonna be so amazing. Like big, right? And so sometimes big feels like hard or challenging or whatever, but I feel like this is going to be like a really big year. Oh, I need to tag Susan to get the weirdo off. She'll take care of it. My team's got my back. Oh, you're working. That's no fun. Hey, Sherry. Um, yeah, so I'm here near Boston with my whole family. We rented a big Airbnb and like everybody's here. All my brothers, my sisters, we got big announcements coming and surprises for the family. I'm super excited about it. Um, and I've been here like, like all week just with them. I wake, so like I wake up every morning, I'm just in my pajamas all day, every day. That's the first day I really got ready. <laughs> hey, Susan, can you read through the chat and then do your magic? <laughs> Thank you. Okay, so seriously, something like whenever I see uh, like something keep coming up, I always know to like share it with my audience. And there has been something that keeps coming up that I've been noticing that um, is interesting. So uh, I keep getting these messages from people who know me, whether it's like friends that I went to school with or people that just sort of tracked with me from um, <laughs> that one, Susan, um, whether it's people from... Um, uh, you know, like in my tribe or have been tracking with me in my business or people that have been clients, it doesn't matter, right? And when, yeah, you'll see when you read through the chat, Susan. <laughs> um, it doesn't matter like where these people are, but they've basically watched my journey and have noticed that this year, uh, I'm just getting tons and tons of feedback for people that are, um, you know, mentioning that they're, working at the police station for years they're mentioning how fast they're watching me grow like like whoa I just watched this huge up level happen for you like I can't believe like who you were here and who you are here is like unbelievable how did you do it so like basically I'm getting hundreds of questions from people on how did you do it and at first when I was like, how did you do it? I'm like, well, you know, you, you show up and you, and I, I wasn't, I wasn't clear on specifically, like if, if I had to give you a very specific answer on how I up leveled so fast in like, you know, in that first year going from like, you know, making $400 a week for 10 years into 380 K, let's say that first year, I just found out it was 390 K. So almost 400 that first year. And like, and then this year it wasn't just about up leveling the business and, you know, 
uh, changing from working like 30 hour weeks to six hour weeks of required work time and that kind of stuff. Right. And then, um, not only doing that, but also like, you know, hiring full-time staff and people on my team and then, uh, you know, making a whole bunch of mistakes and all the kind of things that happen crazy in the business. But like, if you've noticed from the beginning of this year, any of my tribe that has tracked with me from the beginning of the year till now, there's just been a massive up level moving from Rhode Island to someplace tropical, purchasing our first home, like, you know, a big, huge, beautiful house, up leveling my love life and my relationships, um, you know, losing weight, uh, you know, my looks, even my skin, like all these kind of things, my relationship with my kids, really becoming a happier, more fulfilled person who has a lot of, um, you know, free time to take really good care of myself. And it's obvious when you look at me that I've had time and energy and space and financial backing to be able to take care of myself, which for some people can still feel like, um, can still feel like, hold on, my team's reaching out to me. Okay. Uh, which for a lot of people can still feel like, like they don't understand how I did it. How did you do that? So I wanted to break that down today going into the new years, because I feel like that's a really powerful thing for you guys to have. Like, okay. Um, you know, first of all, I created a group on it because I really recognize, okay, this is something rare and that pisses me off. I'm not gonna lie to you. Like it pisses me off that it's rare for people to grow that fast and evolve into, um, a greater human being to up level all the different areas of their life and to watch people get stuck in and triggered feeling like they're a bad person if they take care of themselves or they're a bad person if they um, you know have income or they have financial backing or if they're wealthy or it's bad for people if they have time to take care of themselves or if they take really epic care of themselves it's bad for people if they have a powerful voice if they swear if they're not Christian enough if they're too Christian if they're um, you know, if they're bold or if they're too quiet, it's like all these friggin' rules around who you're allowed to be and how you're cre allowed to create a life that you want. And for damn sure, let's be really honest for a second, for damn sure, y'all have trouble being honest about what you really want. Like what, like what would really make you wake up and be like, oh my God, I cannot believe this is my life. I notice relentlessly, I see people that are really struggling with um, being honest about what they want and what their dream life would really look like. And part of that I recognize is like, we're afraid to get disappointed. I get that. We're, we're friggin' human and I get that. Like it can, it can feel scary to say like, oh, I want that only to have like, there's nothing more painful to like acknowledge that you want something only two seconds later to feel like you can't have that. Right. But like, okay. But what if, what if, you going through the process of being able to feel that disappointment for four seconds is the process of you get to the place where you learn how to have it. But you could never learn how to have it if you never get to the place where you're at least admitting what it is you truly want for your dream life. So I'm guessing for 2019, a whole lot of people are doing the, I want to, I want to reach this goal. I want to have that. I want to create this. I want to create that. And they're playing really small. And not dreaming of like, well, what would it look like if you could be happy and you could look how you wanted to look and you could have the financial backing that you want to have and you felt like a good person doing it and you were in integrity and you felt on purpose and you felt like you were living the purpose of your life, leaving an impact in the world and you felt the freedom to do all of those things and be everything that you could possibly be. Like what if you felt fucking free to be everything that you ever wanted to be as big and bright and powerful and successful and beautiful or sexy or handsome or, uh, you know, even, um, you know, the, the level of impact that you're wanting to have and having the power to be able to create that income. I mean, that impact that you, you want on other people. I'm like, what if there wasn't rules? What if none of it made you bad? What if all of that was complete bullshit and you're buying into it? And the only reason it feels true is because you've told yourself that it's true. Thanks, Susan. Is because you've told yourself that it's true over and over and over and over that you were trained. It was true that other unhealthy people or people playing small or people not stepping into their power or people not being called to what you are being called to. What if those people put their shit on you and you just bought into it and you have haven't bothered to do the work to up level out of that. So what if it's true that you're allowed to be happy, successful, as beautiful or handsome as you want to be, as free as you want to be, as lit the fuck up as you want to be, as quiet, as loud, as bold, as fierce, as whatever the thing that's calling to you. What if you were just allowed to do that and there were no fucking rules? And what if the only thing stopping you from having your dream life is the fact that you have not actually bothered to sit, sit down and get really clear what your dream life is and then what does it fucking look like and then what is it that you actually are going to need to do in order for you to create that who do you need to become in order to create that dream life 
what is the work required for you to do this? You know, I teach my clients how to do enrollment calls, right? So like that's basically, uh, for those of you who maybe don't know, it's uh, like they specify and some kind of particular thing. So if this is your pain point and you want to resolve it and you want to get to a particular place, this is something I help people with. Like, so for me, I help people break into having the life of their dreams. So I, spe I specify in that. So, you know, part of the enrollment process is going from, you know, this is where I am. There's a big gap. This is where I'd like to be. This is the work in between, right? And the more clear that we can, as human beings, help other people see the bullshit that they're telling themselves over here, the way they're lying to themselves over here, and what is the gap, and like, hey, wake the fuck up, you're here, you're not here. You're pretending you're here, but you're not, you're here. And there's a cost here, there's a price here. You're paying a motherfucking price for being here and pretending that you are okay and comfortable and content being here, but you're not. And you're not even daring to hope that you could not be here. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, in enrollment calls, the process is to get them from, to wake up and recognize where they are, recognize that there's a big gap between where they are and where they want to be. And like, hey, by the way, did you know that if you want to be here, you can, there's just some work required for you to get here. Let me draw out what that work looks like for you. And if you're willing to do the work, you get to be here. Because any human being who decides I'm unavailable for anything less than getting there, that's where I want to go, you will get there. Look at a mom who flips a car off her child. Like you can't, you can't just make up what is true and what isn't true. What is true is true. And what is true is that if you are here and want to be here, if you are living a life that's not lighting you up, that you're not excited about, that feels like a struggle and overwhelm and it's hard and you're not having tons of fun and you don't feel like you're supported by people and you don't feel like you're leaving a legacy in the world and like it's a powerful life. Like when you're 95 and you look back, you're so proud of the life you lived, then there's fucking work to do. And which is why I created the program uh, that I created right now called the it's on mandyperry.com. So literally, literally, people have been asking me, well, how did you grow so fast? Like, it wasn't just the money. It wasn't just moving and owning my own home. It wasn't just um, looking significantly healthier and better and happier. It was truly genuinely being happier, owning who I am even more, knowing damn well that people are going to pay just to be in the room next to me. Like, I know that. How did I go from the person I was to a woman who knows people just want to pay to be in the room for me because I've worked so hard. I have such a high level of clarity and expertise and I own my freedom. I own my freedom. I'm free as fuck in my life. I am free as fuck. I have zero chains on me. Every once in a while, I recognize that there was a chain that I didn't notice. And so, you know, I'm sure there are some chains, but the second I notice and recognize one, I work through it and I take ballsy, big, brave moves and call in any kind of support. And I put myself in a position where I'm required to break through that. And I do it over and over relentlessly. And so on some level, people don't understand the work that's required to do that, but most people actually do require, they do understand the work that's required to do that, but they lie to themselves and pretend that they'll be able to do it by themselves. So I'll figure it out myself, which is the biggest load of bullshit. So the reason I created Evolve was specifically because everybody's asking me, how did you grow so fast? How did you grow so fast? Not just how did you make money so fast? How did you turn into a woman who knows her worth and value to the point where she'll allow people just to pay to be in the room with her, feeling like she has to do nothing else but be in the room and be present for them and just, you know, like be present in energy with them, right? And and I know damn well that anytime someone gets an opportunity to be present in my energy, they're uplifted. They're going to that next level. I'm supporting, I'm carrying them in my energy. And I know this, like, how did you go from here to here, right? So that is what I'm breaking down in, in, in look, 90% of this is having the balls to put yourself in a position where you're required to show up. And most people aren't going to do that. And most people have a million excuses as to why they shouldn't ever have to do that. So in one of my groups, client overflow right now, I just had a client reach out and be like, oh my God, you're right. She was spinning some bullshit patterns on like why things are scary and hard. And I called her out on some stuff and coached her through it. And then she recognized, oh my God, you're right. I don't have a choice but to show up. And I, that is not a scary place to be in. In our culture, I feel like people think if I'm in a position where I don't have a choice but to show up, that's a bad position. I don't know. I mean, no, I'm sorry. I do know. I think that's complete bullshit. I think that the work is for us to become strong and confident and savvy enough where we're, when we're in positions where we have to be decisive, we have to make powerful decisions and we're required to show up, we do. <laughs> 
So the work was always for you to be brave enough and have the balls and confidence in yourself enough for you to show up and put yourself in a position where now I have to show up. Either, either I've made a verbal commitment or a written commitment, or I've made a financial commitment, or I have whatever it is, I've put myself, I've, I've pushed myself to the brink where now like, okay, I'm at the edge of what I know. I'm going to have to show up as next level me, the me that I know I'm capable of, but I haven't been doing up until now in order to make this happen. And in order to live the kind of life where you keep pushing yourself to that brink, that point where you, you are required to go beyond yourself into something new, you also have to learn the skill of being able to be comfortable in that space, being comfortable uncomfortable. You have to know how to content yourself, how to put your mind at ease, how to energize yourself, how to bring inspiration to the table, to be in a state of overflow where when you're showing up in life, you're creating powerful epic results because you're in that state of overflow and you feel okay, even when the pressure's on, even when the tension is on, even when you've put yourself in that position. That is the goal. So for some of you, you're going to be aware, like, okay, I'm at least aware. Like, tell me, t you guys comment below and tell me, like, who is aware that the goal is to become comfortable being in that level of tension? So if you, like, can you recognize how powerful you will become, how much you will create and accomplish if you learn how to feel safe and comfortable and at ease and happy and, 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 and you know, like, of course, everything's going to be okay. You trust yourself to show up when you're putting your ass on the line in a position where like, holy shit, I am now required to accomplish something I've never accomplished up until now. And I'm comfortable with that. And I'm okay with that. Some people have that level of awareness. And now it's like, okay, what are you doing in order to create that? Because if you think that you're going to be able to create that ability, that skill set and have that level of discipline, staying in your comfort zone, that doesn't even make any goddamn sense at all. <laughs> Obviously, you're not going to learn to be stronger in tension of growth if you're staying in your comfort zone. And the other half of the people that would even be interested in doing this kind of work really don't even know that that's the goal. They're still sort of stuck in the place where they're believing that uh, I'm something's wrong if I'm in tension. Like I'm not even supposed to be in tension. I'm supposed to prove that I can accomplish all of this before I even take a step that would put me in a place of tension. That doesn't work. That's none of that. Well, how's it working so far? I guess that's all I have to say, right? The like button needs a fire. You're so right. <laughs> I love it. Do you see what I'm saying? So I don't know what position you're in right now, but this is what I do know. This is where my heart is. And this is what like, I literally am saying like, okay, God, give me the wisdom. Give me the clarity on how to break this down for them. Like, how can I get them to understand that in order for them to reach their dream life, to really create the kind of life that I feel, I wake up every morning, like my hand on my heart, I wake up every morning giddy for the day, like, oh my God. And I'm not telling you I don't hit points of tension. Are you kidding me? I do the bravest, ballsiest shit in my life. Like nobody gets result like this, not taking wild leaps, you know, and, and that's what it is. And so I've learned to be content during those moments. But of course I have moments where shit's kicking my ass or like, ooh, and I'll work out and I know what to do to get through it. But I wake up every day, literally like, oh my God, I can't even believe how amazing my life is. Like, I can't, I, I just like, I'm so grateful. This is so incredible. Like, how is this my life? And it just keeps getting better and better and better and better. My business gets better. My connection with my clients gets better. Creating the content I do gets better. The, the, the way I run my home with my children gets better. My freedom gets better. The, what's available for me through, you know, my, my sex life, my love life, that all gets better. Like everything just keeps getting better and better. And do you know what it feels like to be someone like that, that wakes up like that and, and used to be someone that was literally truly just surviving, waking up being like, how do I fucking put food on the table for my kids today? How do I get through another day of tests? Somebody just called me. How do I make it to everything that I'm supposed to be able to make it through right now? Like as a woman who woke up that way every day, I, I was in depression. I was on anti-anxiety meds. I was on antidepressants. So let me just tell you what it feels like to be someone like me who wakes up every single morning absolutely lit the fuck up and on fire wanting nothing more than to figure out okay and being like uh, almost a little bit impatient or entitled maybe sometimes about it I'm not gonna lie to you wanting to show the fuck up and just be like how do I get them to see that if they're willing to put their ass on the line and put themselves in a place of tension that is how they're gonna learn nothing is wrong when you're like oh my god what I don't know that this is gonna work of course you don't fucking know how would you know that something new that you're about to do to create a new kind of life and new results for yourself is gonna work 
You don't know, you decide, you decide. I'm deciding that nothing less than this will happen, right? Like I just made a huge move. Most people know in my business, I guess I've been really open about it because it's just how I roll. You know, like I, I asked for a divorce, right? So uh, going through a divorce right now and you know, really knowing and trusting and having complete faith and confidence that that's not just best for me, that's best for everybody involved. Because if it's an integrity of my soul, it means it's best for everybody involved, regardless of what the emotional state is in current moments. I know and feel in full integrity that that's allowed. Now, how many freaking things do you think came up with that? You're bad. Who does that to their family? Uh, you know, like I, I'm, I should feel guilty because someone else is hurt or like, I can't believe I'm doing this to my kids or like, who am I to dare to believe that I can have more, you know, whatever kind of connection and love and et cetera, et cetera. It's easy for people to judge me on that. It would be super easy. It's a vulnerable position for me to be. In. And I don't give a fuck. Do you know why I don't care? Because I know my soul and I trust my soul and I trust my connection with knowing what's an integrity for me. And I don't let what cultural beliefs are or what other people are going to judge me on or what they're going to think in gospel. People that are miserable are going to you know, say about what I'm doing with my life. When I wake up feeling like my life is so incredible, I can barely contain it. My joy, my happiness, my freedom, the levels of fun that I have, I feel a little bit of longing for more fun, but I feel like I'm breaking into that with the current things that I'm, you know, the moves I'm making in my business. Uh, but in general, like my connection with my kids, my, my relationship with them, the way that we travel all around the world, you know, watching them, like watching my son get an Uber for the first time and then, you know, fly somewhere by himself and like plan all this stuff and purchase it himself. This shit lights me up and I wake up like who feels like this making these kind of ballsy moves? Me. Do you know why? Because I've jumped in with other people way ahead of me who loved me enough to teach me and to support me and to stop living by cultural or dogmatic or whatever other kind of beliefs and to actually follow my soul. And so when I long for something now that is to me, it's like, oh, there's my compass. There's my beep, beep, beep. That's the thing to follow. I long for this thing because it's calling me to my purpose. It is calling me to my purpose. That is why I long for it. You and I don't long for the same shit. You don't long for the same shit that I do because you have a different purpose and a different calling than me. They might be somewhat similar, but they're not the same. So you're going to long for different shit than I long for. And if you're judging someone else for what they long for because you long for something different, but you're not giving yourself permission for something different, like what is that? You're going to judge people for something you have no fucking clue about. That's their soul's journey, not yours. But you're also going to not give yourself permission for the things you long for because other people will judge that. Like, is this the kind of world you want to participate in? Is that the shit you want to create for your kids and your grandkids? Like that's the world we're creating right here. Nobody's allowed to ha like to, to be honest about what they long for. Everybody has to deny their purpose and play small and shine small and, and, and make sure that we don't piss anybody off and don't let anybody judge us and all these kind of things. So when we live that way, there's no stamina. You don't have any stamina to take that bold step and block out the other shit, block out the gossip, Block out the chitter chatter, block out the judgment, block out the, you know, the like half that shit probably not even going on because nobody's so worried about you. They're more worried about them, right? Like we actually aren't like most of the shit that we're afraid of doesn't actually even come to fruition, but we block it out. We block out the guilt that I might be feeling because I was instilled this thing that's actually not an integrity for me to, I don't actually believe that, but I was told it so many times that there's a fear that I might become a bad person. The predictions we have, well, if I make a bunch of money, then I'm, what if I'm a self-absorbed person? I don't want to end up like that person. By the way, that person you don't want to end up like, that person is changing the motherfucking world in people's lives and leaving an impact while you're not and you're sitting there judging yourself that you don't want to be like that superficial person that you don't even know that's changing the motherfucking world. It's this huge thing that I'm watching going on. The wealthy people are judging the poor people. They're lazy. The lazy people are judging the wealthy people as, oh my God, they're superficial. They only care about money. It's all ridiculousness. It's all bullshit. All of it. And you want to know why? You want to know why we all buy into that shit? Why everybody in the culture is just buying into this shit? Because people are afraid to feel disappointed. They're afraid that if I own what I'm, what I really want, I'm not going to be able to have it. And you don't trust yourself to show up and do the fucking work to, to create the kind of life that you won't admit to yourself that you really want to have, that you really want to have. And so I wake up thinking, how do I wake them up today? Okay, God, lay it on me. How do I wake them up today? What do I need to adjust? How can I grow? How can I speak into their lives better? How can I wake them the fuck up? And so I was like, you know what? That's it. I'm creating an entire program on how to evolve, how to evolve from the person who's caught up in all the rules and everybody else's, you know, judgments and, and what if I fail and everything's scary and everything's overwhelming and I don't know what I'm doing and I don't know what I want and all that bullshit. And we're just putting it aside. We're done with that shit. We're creating our dream motherfucking life in 2019 and we are evolving 
evolving into the human being that it took for you to leave the impact you are meant to leave on this world. Do you know how many hundreds of thousands of people are not being served because you're not stepping into your purpose? Because you're playing small? Because you're worried about what Shannon Bob over there is going to say about something we don't actually give a shit what she's going to say about because it has nothing to do with anything because your purpose is to change the fucking world? This is the work. This is the work. What do you think you can create in your life if you step into this work and you actually put yourself in an arena where you're required to show up with this shit and you decide this is gonna work because I said so. And yeah, this is scary for me to really own all of the power of who I am. Maybe it's scary for me to face some of the things in my life that aren't working that I don't wanna face because it feels too overwhelming and scary. Here's what I have to say about that. You don't have to be afraid of that. I, I'm telling you, I, I've been here a million times. I'm, you do not have to be afraid of this because what happens is if you don't know, if you're like, this is one I hear a lot. If you don't know that you're gonna outgrow, but like, but what if I outgrow them? What if I outgrow my friends or my parents or my husband or my wife or my girlfriend or my whatever, right? Like I'm, I'm so afraid I'm gonna outgrow these people and then I'm gonna be all by myself and I'm gonna be like this self-absorbed piece of shit who didn't care about the people I love. That is such a common thing for heart-centered people. And this is what I have to say about that. What I have to say is that it doesn't fucking matter because if you feel that way right now, then you're not outgrown them. And if you did outgrow them, it would be crystal clear in your mind. Oh, like this is how they're showing up. This is how I'm showing up. Me owning everything that I possibly have to give this planet and choosing to be as big and bright and fulfilled and, and allowing abundance to come into my life and like allowing that tap to be turned on and I'm participating in the kind of world where we're free and we're happy and we're lit the fuck up and we're being who we are and we're not worried about rule, rules and dogma. And there's no separation. And, and like I'm participating in that kind of world. And when I participate in that kind of world, Either they will join in or they won't, and that has nothing to do with me. That is their soul's journey. But how am I supporting them by me not stepping into my abundance and joy and happiness? How does that support them for them to get their abundance and joy and happiness? It could never support them. You holding back and playing small could never, ever help somebody else play big. It will never support someone else and them living their dream life or being lit up or happy. Can you hear me? Can you hear what I'm saying to you? Never once ever in your life will you holding back, playing small, playing safe, not saying the things, not being the things, not doing the things, not having the things, will ever support someone else for them to thrive ever in your life. Only by being a person who has done the work and who is brave enough to step into their true power and allow abundance to flow into their life and for them to just have and do and be everything they were ever could possibly ever be on this planet, will you then be a person who participates in creating the kind of world where others are allowed to have that as well? You cannot give a dollar if you do not have a dollar. If you are not giving yourself permission to be everything you're meant to be, you cannot give that to somebody else. So it's all just bullshit excuses and a party who knows it because we know the truth when we hear it. We really do. You know the truth when you hear it. So what are the excuses left for you not stepping into your full life and your power? Like what is truly left? Money is evil. I'm going to be bad. Like, look, if you were any good at predicting, then you should just go do the lottery and shit. Like you're not, you're no good at predicting. Like, oh, you're going to predict. You can't predict who you're going to be when you're someone who you're not right now. We're going to grow. Like you have to give yourself a, a permission to expand and to grow. Like what kind of world is it where we don't have permission? Like, well, if I change, I might be a bad person. So I can't change. Like, come on. That's like saying, if I go running every day, I might turn into like this, uh, I might turn anorexic. <laughs> like, so you're never going to work out because you might be anorexic. You might turn into, you know, what, like, it's ridiculous. Like, are you here? Like, can we just hear this stuff for a second? Like, I'm going to be a bad person because I make money. You're going to be who you are. <laughs> money can't change who you are. If that shit were true, then, I mean, we would already be using that as a way of changing people. We would be taking money away or giving money as a way to change people. It cannot change you. It cannot do an inner change on you. You are who you are. And by the way, if you're a person whose intention is to be lit the fuck up so you can participate in the kind of world where you're, you're creating permission for others to do the same, how could that person ever magically just turn into like some evil superficial whatever bullshit? None of this shit even makes any sense. Like if we would just say this stuff out loud to each other, we'd be like, yeah, girl, 
that sounds fucking whack. That's what we would say. That's the shit my friends would say to me if half the shit in my head that I have bought into, if I just would say it out loud, it sounds ridiculous. But when we're left to our own devices and we kind of are isolating and we're not doing the fucking work and we're not getting in the room with other people who are calling us out on our shit, we spin these kind of stories and they sound so good. And then we get into cultures and cliques where it's like everybody's just doing that and we all just buy into it like together unanimously. And now there's this huge crowd of people who buys into the bullshit. So if all of these people believe it and have bought it for hundreds of years or thousands of years how could I possibly like that do you know the amount of faith that's required for you to step into something that all of your family and friends believe differently in this is why we say it's one in a million so if you think you're gonna do that all by yourself while you're surrounded by other people who are all playing small and all have the fucking rules that you're not allowed to break out of and just all by your lonesome, you're magically just gonna charge through and you're gonna fucking show up completely differently and you're not gonna be dragged down by the people around you because you have no support in any of the three, like, all right, come on now, we're smarter than this. Okay, so. The whole point, if you got nothing else out of this, is two things. One, get your ass over to mandyperry.com and look at Evolve and join motherfucking Evolve. We're evolving. This is about learning the discipline and the skill to become everything you're meant to become, period, end of story. It's not gonna be comfortable to, to dig into some of these places. Who the fuck needs comfortable? We just need doable. We just need to be able to do it. And you can do it, right? You can do it. And by the way, Maybe it's not comfortable at first because you're unfamiliar with stepping into this work, but it will get comfortable. It is now way more comfortable for me to step into these, like, like holy shit, some of the decisions I made, I just made a $30,000 decision yesterday and I was like, oh, that's a big decision for someone that just two and a half years ago energetically was set at fucking welfare level, right? Like that's a big decision. And I made the decision and moved along. Like things are getting so much easier and the level of tension that I can step into is growing exponentially as I'm evolving, right? So number one, the whole point is definitely go over to mandyperry.com, check out Evolve, get your ass in the group. Like this is, this is the whole shebang of how to evolve into the next level you all the pieces of it are in here okay part two is i just need you to recognize for a second that the stories we tell ourselves are the things that are holding us back period end of story it's not real don't don't try to spin me your bullshit i it's not you know it's not real i know it's not real i know it feels real because we've been told it so many times and then we told ourselves it so many times that it feels real it feels real that I might be a bad person if I'm rich. It feels like I might be a bad person if I'm just trying to look beautiful. Maybe I'll get raped. Maybe some horrible thing will happen if I'm like really trying to look sexy. It feels like I'm a horrible person if I ask for a divorce. It feels like I'm, I should never swear online or I'm gonna like, my business is gonna fail. It feels like people are gonna judge me if I speak the truth about these kind of polar things. It feels like uh, my team is never gonna be as great as I want it to be because I'm triggered around people never showing up. It feels like whatever other hundred things we're telling ourselves, it feels like, no, it's wise for me to prove to myself that I can do it before I make that investment. It feels like I should never use a credit card. It feels like I should never sell my shit. It feels like I should not be the expert in this field. I'm not good enough yet. Who can I help? How do I know? I can? It feels like all of this shit, but that doesn't mean it's true. It's just a feeling based on some shit that's been told to you over and over and over, whether it was you or somebody else. That's it. A belief is nothing more than something you told yourself over and over or have heard over and over and over. So if you want to start changing that and you want to wake up feeling lit the fuck up and excited for the day going to sleep feeling like your soul is empty you fucking shared everything you were meant to you're living your purpose you're gonna be so proud of yourself at 95 you're participating in creating the kind of world that you want your children to grow up in that you're really like excited for them to grow up in this kind of world if that's the stuff you're looking into then it's gonna require you learning the fucking muscle of being brave enough to step into an arena where you're required to show up and it's gonna require you to learn the discipline of being able to be okay happy lit the fuck up taking really good care of yourself and enjoying life while you're under pressure and tension because you're constantly growing going to that next level it's going to require you to stop with the story that like if i feel tension something's wrong nothing's wrong nothing's wrong that's all ass backwards if you're all content and everything's just like all copacetic and content then you're not growing the two can't go together you can't be growing out of an energetic state that you're like your nervous system is set here like let's say 50 degrees and you envision your life at 100 degrees but you're at 50 degrees when you push it to 60 degrees, you're all going to be looking how to open the window and let the hot air out so that you can bring it back down to 50 degrees because that's your set point. So we're talking about in order to go to 60, 70, 80, 90 degrees, you're going to have to be a little bit uncomfortable. Your nervous system's going to freak out a little bit. 
the work is to get comfortable with that. Like, okay, yeah, this is, I'm right on track here. This is what it's supposed to feel like. And then we learn the skill sets of being able to manage that so that you're enjoying life while you're at that place. This is everything. This is how you're going to evolve. And it also requires a level of clarity, decisiveness, all these kind of things in order for you to be able to get to the place where you're the kind of person who evolves quickly. You outgrow things. You're able to block out the, block out the stuff from the other people looking to pull you back down because everybody wants everybody to be the same. You can't be above me. You can't be too below me. I'm just going to keep my... You ever see children in school? right? Like, or, or like you move to a new town. It's like, do you ever notice like if your friends before like hated their husband and then you move to this new place, all of a sudden all your new friends hate their husband too or whatever bullshit, right? Like, like you go to, like you see little kids and, and they always migrate to the alike, right? Like wealthy kids migrate to alike kids. The sports kids migrate to the sports kids. The musicians migrate to the musicians. It's like we find like and we stay there. So if you're always just finding like in your life and you're staying there, how are you ever going to go over here? If you don't know the skill set of how to up level and how to evolve to that next level of you. It's human nature for us to just stay at the same level. Neurologically, you're built so that whatever you did yesterday and the day before is what you show up and do today because your body knows you'll, you won't die. It's very safe there. Our only job is to keep you alive. So I don't know if you're looking to just keep surviving through 2019, give yourself a bunch of bullshit. Oh, I'm going to do all of these things in 2019. And you last through February and then you're right back to where you were. Or maybe you took one baby step forward at the end of 2019. You're frustrated with yourself. You kind of live the same year all over again. You still weren't pushing through those next results. You haven't really evolved. You still feel guilty about things. You still feel like people are stealing your energy or you're doing work for other people or, you know, uh, maybe you're controlling things and micromanaging, whatever it is, it doesn't matter. I don't care if you're, you know, uh, an at-home mom who's just like even considering stepping into her business or you're a multi-million dollar mogul, but you're feeling trapped in your life. This is the work right here. This is the program. Evolve is the program for this. This is the friggin' work that we're doing to step out of this and to step into who we're called and meant to be. What else is more? There, there is nothing else. There is nothing else. This is what brings joy. This is what brings happiness. And you're doing day to day what you would be doing whether you got paid or not. This is true contentment. Then you just add the freedom and everything on top of it. It's just going to sound like I'm bragging, but that's the field. It's not me. I'm not bragging about me. I'm talking about that's the field. When you're living your purpose, that's just doors fucking open and you know it, you know what I'm saying is true. Okay. So that is the call for new year. So if you're interested in the program, hop over to mandyperry.com. If you're not interested in the program, I would at least call you into 2019 for you to be honest with yourself about what is holding you back. How much clarity do you have on what your dream life is? And are, do you even know, do you know what the work is for you to do in order for you to close that gap, to get from where you are to where you want to go? Do you know what the work is? Because if you don't even know what the work is, if you don't have clarity there, first of all, you're lying to yourself. Just sit your ass down and write down what it is. But if you have a big pattern convincing you that you don't know, you need to get support on that, right? We'll cover that stuff and evolve. Um, getting clear on what your dream life is, what your purpose is, and then also what is the work that you're going to need to do that, right? So like for me, I had this really big pattern of rescuing people. It is what it is. I just had a huge pattern of rescuing people in my life and I needed help with it. I wasn't getting out of it by myself. I wasn't magically going to change a pattern that had been born since I was a kid, 38 years of me feeling that way. I wasn't magically just going to shift that. I needed support in order to learn how to not feel guilty by not overgiving and to believe that I was still a good person if I wasn't overgiving. If I spent money on myself, if I spent time on myself, that I was still a good person and to rewire what I got, I just trained you. That is one high level rewire right there to get to the place where you understand as I thrive and give to myself, I give the whole world permission for them to do the same for themselves. I cannot be someone saying, take better care of yourself. Of course you deserve that. You're worthy, but I don't give it to myself. That is completely out of integrity. Not okay. Absolutely not okay. And by the way, as I say that I was in the shower just a minute ago and I was thinking, you know what it's like when, when coaches are like, well, who am I to help them? Like, I, you know, like I, I'm not, I'm a mess myself and like, I can't help those people. I was thinking that would be like me saying, well, you know, I'm not as hot as Beyonce. So who am I to date? I can't date anyone because she's prettier than me. It's like so dumb. Like there is someone for everyone. There's different levels of everything. And just because there are women so much hotter than me doesn't mean that I don't get to date. I don't get to, you know, find love and, and find whatever else I'm looking for, right? Like, of course I can. I don't have to look like Beyonce to have that. And there'll always be people ahead of you and there'll always be people doing a better job at everything or doing better or looking better or having better or having, it doesn't fucking matter. Like that is the death trap. Do not be comparing yourself to other fucking people. You get to put your hand on your soul and say, can I help that person? 
Hell yes, I can help them. Done. End of story. We're not going anywhere outside of those boundaries. You need to have the discipline to create those boundaries for yourself and be clear about that. Because if you can't even do that, how are you going to show up and do the work to get yourself to evolve? Right? And that is everything. Like, how do you build your business? Become the woman it took. Become the man it took in order for you to show up and create the results that you're looking to. That is the whole point. You become the person it took in order for you to create the results. Not what do I need to do as a task list in order for me to create the results. I refuse to teach anybody that I ever coach in any of my programs, even my highest level mastermind girls, I absolutely refuse to teach them how to do something without setting this in first. Because what is the point? Now you're just doing a bunch of tasks as the person that you are. What makes you think that those tasks are magically gonna get you some huge result? Consistency and tasks will get you a result, but they're not gonna get you the result of the dream life you're looking for. Becoming the person it took to create the results is what will get you the dream life because nobody can take that away from you. I don't care whatever happened, right? Like there's some kind of stuff going on where I'm having to protect myself and my business right now. And I don't care, like, I don't feel threatened because I know that no matter whatever, I don't care, someone could come take everything that I have away. I became the woman it took to create this life. You can't take that away from me. That is the safest thing there is. Do you know how good that feels? To just know that I became someone with this level of wisdom and discipline and heart-centered and belief that I can impact the world and, 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 you know, people, my tribe, are you kidding me? Do you know what it feels like to have a tribe that shows up the way my tribe shows up with support and loving and investing and, and doing the work? I mean, I, you can't take that away from me. And that is what I want for you. I want you in 2019 to become the person it took for you to create your dream life and, and know and have that level of depth and confidence in yourself and that feeling of safety of knowing that that can never be taken away from you. It's not a to-do thing. It's not a fucking task list. That can always go awry. This is becoming. It's very, very different. It's evolving into the person it took to, to create this life. Make sense? Yeah, yes. Okay, guys, that was all I had for a message today. Um... My family's downstairs. I can't believe nobody's interrupted me. <laughs> it didn't snow here. I'm so bummed. We flew from Florida. We're here over in Boston and I, there's no snow. Oh, I had friends who are in Arizona and stuff send me pictures of snow because we have no snow here. I'm hoping it snows before we leave. We'll see if it works or not. Um, I hope everybody's having a fantastic New Year's. Um, and... <sighs> and really my wish for you is to open yourself up to having a hundred times more than you believe you're allowed to have, becoming a hundred times more, a thousand times more than you ever daydream that you could become. Because we were talking about this in my Diamond Mastermind this morning, because when you set your goals small, they'll stay small. Like be ballsy, be brave, set big goals, jump into shit you're not sure is gonna work that you feel drawn to. If it feels like a hell yes inside, it is. Of course it's gonna feel scary and intention. Of course you don't know how to fucking do it. You're, you will do it though. You get to trust yourself and have some confidence. And, and life is rigged for the bold. So if you're not bold, you ain't gonna cut it in this field. I mean, that's what it is. It's gonna take some balls. It's gonna take some bravery. It's gonna take some things that maybe feel, uh, what's the word? Reckless even right? If you're like super controlling and like it has to be just so and I have to prove things then it might feel reckless. If you're really like trying to protect yourself, it'll feel reckless. It's felt reckless many times for me, even though it's not because if soul says yes, it is what it is, right? So that's it. The word for 2019. I was actually like a little triggered to share this with you guys. I felt like, oh, I don't want to say that. That sounds superficial. But of course, I'm going to say it because that's what I do because I'm not letting that pattern win. The word for 2019 for me, I would love to hear you guys. It's like if there's one word for like what you feel like for 2019, what is it? My word is satisfied. Like believing tr to an epic level that I get to have a life that I'm satisfied. I'm satisfied in all areas of my life in my mothering, in my, in my sex life, my romance life, in my friendship life, in my fun levels, in my spiritual walk, in my you know relationships with my extended family, in my clients as a businesswoman, as a leader, I get to feel satisfied. How good is that? Ah, and you know what's so funny? My daughter was watching this video. Oh my God, I gotta tell you guys a story. Hold on, it's really funny. So my daughter went to sleep in this other room with my sister, Stephanie. My sister's pregnant right now. So uh, she went to sleep in there and my sister was like super tired and she went to go to sleep. And so Bailey had her little iPad and she was like, mom, can I listen to like some soothing nighttime music? And I was like, yeah, go ahead. So I'm thinking she's gonna listen to like, you know, the ocean music or something like that. So she freaking lays down and I, I like shutting the door and my sister's like, what is that? And so like, I just like kind of listened and my daughter has this like YouTube, ooh, liberation, good one, Mandy. Mm, love it. 
So my daughter has this like YouTube station on and it has all these weird things like, you know, that like flarp or whatever it is. And you like stick your finger and it's like, or whatever it is. And then like, like these like picking noises, like a thing turning with a pick going like ding, 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 ding. And like all these different like weird noises and weird things that are supposed to be like when you watch them, they're like satisfying. So it's like, uh, and I hear her tell my sister like, oh, it's super satisfying. And they're like these awkward, strange, hilarious noises on YouTube. You have to look it up, YouTube like satisfying videos or something. I don't know, but maybe that would be dangerous to, to look up. But they're like meant for kids and they're hilarious and they're just, like we, just all weird things that you would never think about, like like peeling something that has like a smooth peel to it. It's just like all these random things that are supposed to be satisfying. And I hear her tell, like she wants to fall asleep to this. And she's telling my sister like, oh, it's she's eight years old and she's telling my sister how it's satisfying and how she'll she'll enjoy it. Satisfying. And I was like, that is the word for 2019. Satisfying. Like I get to have things that feel satisfying. I'm not a bad person if I'm satisfied. I, if something isn't satisfying, I get to choose to change it. I'm not locked into anything. There's no fucking rules. I'm not a sinner or a bad person or a superficial woman, or I'm not in danger. Bad things aren't gonna happen to me because I'm choosing satisfaction because I'm allowing myself to have that level of freedom and joy and 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 peace and fun and, and, and laughter and hilariousness and success and, and money and epic friendships and relationships with my family and traveling like I get to be satisfied and that is not bad and it doesn't make you bad we all want to feel satisfied so lying to yourself about it actually is probably the closest thing to bad behavior that would technically be true like you can lie about it or we can own it and start changing the beliefs around what that means about you because you long to be satisfied or wealthy or successful or travel the world or have epic love or you know rearrange a dynamic that you're feeling drained by or etc it doesn't matter like you really get to have it and this is the work to start to change these beliefs Ooh, my diamond posted me, what'd she say? I will not allow other people's patterns to affect me. I will choose to fill my life with my own love. Oh my God, all my high level clients are on here. My word is unstoppable. That was basically my word last year, was like unapologetic and unstoppable were my words last year. Oh, those resonate with me so much. This word, the word for this year triggered me. I, I was triggered by this, like satisfied. Like, I don't know, you should be hustling, not satisfied. And I was like, nope, it's satisfied. That is the word this year. I will have epic levels of satisfaction this year in all areas of my life, period, end of story. Yes, greatness, love it. Oh my God, Cindy, Sarah, Paula, you guys are all on here. <laughs> I love you guys. What are you guys doing for New Year's? Tell me really quick. I wanna know. Ugh, unstoppable. Connection. Oh, of course. Cindy's is connection. Yes. That one's never been mine. Connection. But I do feel that way with uh, my, my diamond mastermind clients and with closer friends in my life, that deep longing for connection in like a humorous, bantery way like I am. And even in my dating life, that like connection. Yeah, I do long for that there. Hello, Jose. Hold on. I just want to see this. Happy New Year's. I want to see if I missed any other ones. Liberation, unstoppable, connection, greatness. Love, yes, self-love. You know, isn't that such a cliche word, like self-love? It's almost like it's easy to ignore it, but then when you, then when you, um, when you actually show up and do the work to have self-love, that is not fucking cliche. <laughs> it's not something ignorable. That is big work. That is big girl panties. True self-love of who you truly are, what you feel called to do, what your actual message is, what your voice is, what your personality type is, what things you suck at or where your gaps are and holes are, the choices you've made, all of the kind of things like self-love. That is a big calling right there. Celebrating with all the beautiful people in Puerto Rico roaring the last Sunday. Oh my God, I'm so jealous. Yay. I'm here in Boston, don't even freaking get snow. I'm trying not to be bitchy about it, but what the hell, I want some snow. I freaking moved away from here to get away from the snow. I come back and there's no snow, it's like 50 degrees. And there's like a lake right next to us. I was like, what the hell? Ooh, allow, dancing into 2019. Do you know what's on my bucket list, Paula? Totally on my bucket list is hip hop dancing. <laughs> 
And, and I put it on my bucket list knowing that the only places I can actually go hip hop dancing lessons are with little kids. I'm gonna literally be in the room with little kids doing hip hop lessons. And I still put it on my bucket list. <laughs> I was very proud of myself for this because that's gonna be uncomfortable at first. <laughs> Maybe I can drag my, my daughter to come with me. <laughs> I'll do it with you. Maybe we can find online hip hop dancing. Okay, if anybody knows about online hip hop dancing, I need you to send it to me or tag me in it because that will be so much better than going to a place where little kids are doing hip hop dancing. <laughs> oh, that's really funny. Can you seriously picture me being six feet tall in the room with a bunch of little kids like trying to learn hip hop dancing? And trust me, I do not know how to dance on any level whatsoever at all. I do the total like, I don't give a shit what anybody thinks dance, like any kind of real dancing. And I think I got pretty good rhythm. Like I've always been like musically inclined in sports. I've always played sports and stuff, but like actual dancing skill, none. I remember when I was a kid in high school, they, um, they, they made me go on, do, they, I was a basketball player, I wasn't a cheerleader, but my, one of my closest friends was a cheerleader and she asked me to do like bass on the cheerleading because I was, I was tall and I was strong and so one of the guys that did cheerleading was her or something like that. So they asked me to do bass in the cheerleading and I had to learn these like very basic <laughs> dance moves for the cheerleading thing and I had to do it in like front of everybody and I did it because I loved her and she was one of my closest friends. But I remember thinking like, I would like, who would do this to themselves on purpose? I'm in like this mini skirt dancing, doing like these like rah, rah, whatever moves and throwing people in the air. I was like, yeah, this is not my thing. <laughs> it was just so not my thing at all. Oh my God, you teach dance? That's hilarious. Oh, okay guys, that's it. I see my Diamond Mastermind girls talking about doing hip hop and we are gonna find somebody to come to a live event and teach us hip hop. Maybe I'll be able to find someone from Bali to come give us hip hop dance lessons. <laughs> oh my God. I remember one time when I was going to one of my own events, the girls went to like this strip pole dancing class and I didn't make it to that event. And I remember seeing the pictures online and being like, oh my God, I'm so glad I didn't make it to that event. Like I'd have been mortified to be like publicly shown online doing strip pole dancing. <laughs> now I would do it. Now I'd be like, whatever, I don't care. It doesn't mean it, it doesn't mean I'm a bad Christian. It doesn't mean some bad thing, right? Like it's like actual just dancing, having fun with my friends. Like now I would do it, but then I wasn't quite as far evolved as I am now and I would have died, I think. And I was like, maybe that's why I wasn't in the room. <laughs> Oh, that's really funny. Okay, that's it. We're gonna be looking for hip hop dancing for the Diamond Mastermind girls at our live event. I'm going to do it, I'm gonna look, and then we're going to hip hop together. And I already know Cindy knows how to dance. It's not hip hop, I don't know what the hell it is, but it's something amazing. She got her own word for whatever her dance is. That shit's amazing. <laughs> okay, bucket list for 2019 is hip hop dancing and doing hip hop dancing lessons at the live events. We're gonna be a crew of people who do live together that know how to fucking hip hop. How's that? <laughs> And then maybe when I have the live event, I will be, by the way, guys, I will be doing a live event for the public. My uh, three um, a year now are actually closed to the public. Those are just for my high-end Diamond Mastermind girls uh, or my apprentice girls. And then uh, I will be doing one a year that will be public. It'll be announced ahead of time. And then I was just thinking that my Diamond Mastermind girls and I might do a hip hop show for you at this live event. <laughs> We'll break it down and do some, some what? Who sings hip hop? Some Britney Spears, oops, I did it again. <laughs> no, definitely not that one. But something. <laughs> and you will have to pay VIP tickets for that, obviously. Maybe we'll do like a VIP dinner and us, the Diamond Girls and I will break down some kind of show for you guys, some hip hop show while you're doing your VIP dinner. <laughs> I did say fun was the top of my priority list for 2019. <laughs> oh my God, I love you guys so much. <laughs> I can just picture me, Paula, and Cindy breaking down doing some dancing. That is hilarious. I did see that, Amanda, the Beachbody one. I saw that on there. Kicking ass and taking names, hell yes. <laughs> Fitness Marshall on YouTube. Oh my God, okay, I'm looking it up. We're completely all into ridiculousness right now. But I'm okay with that. 
Okay, wait, what was it called? Fitness Marshall. Looking it up. Oh, it's Cardi B and Lady Gaga. And oh my God, she found some. This is some version of, yeah, Sarah, we're doing it. Okay, so something called Fit, Fitness Marshall has like, like hip hop songs that there's dance routines to that is a workout thing. Like Megan Trainer, Me Too, I Like It by Cardi B, Monster by Lady Gaga, Can't Stop the Feeling. Oh my God, the, oh, of course they got Britney Spears, okay. I'm going to do this. I'm not going to lie to you. I already did my workout today, but I'm going to do this this week. <laughs> Thanks, Cindy. That's an epic. <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll post the link in the chat. Hold on. Oh, it's got big girls, little girls, and boys. Oh my God, this is so good. Oh, I can hear that my brother's here down here. Copy. Okay, I'm putting it in the chat. This is Megan Trainer's song. Oh, so Cindy's sharing her secrets. Oh my God, that is so funny. How did I not know about this? How does the whole world not know about this? This should definitely be a thing for everybody. I'm actually excited to go do this now. <laughs> I'm gonna be watching it while my family's doing dinner. Oh my God, this is the greatest idea ever. Okay, now, okay, so now for my Diamond Girls, I'm just gonna call you to a little bit more where you're gonna have to let me know what other craziness that we can be doing. <laughs> I was already thinking about, um, you know, in Bali, they have those big, huge swings that you can like go out into the field. They have them at this like coffee bean sort of village place that you can go to there. Um, and then I was also thinking about in Maui, they do like the cliff you jump off the cliff or they do like the shark cages or they do shoot it. Like you can use the, I know some people might be like upset about this, but you can, you can like spear fishing. That's what it's called. So you can do spear fishing with like sharks and shit and like under the water. Like you have to dive down and do spear fishing. That sounds epic. All of these things look awesome. Oh, thanks, Eric. All of these things, uh, really excite me. So yeah, any exciting, fabulous ideas or things that people have done, I need on my bucket list. So feel free to drop in comments and let me know about these things. Oh my God, it is so funny. Okay, I gotta go hang out with my family. Happy fucking New Year's Eve. I was gonna say frigging, but I wanted to say fucking because it just feels like 2019 is just gonna be so amazing. Happy fucking New Year's Eve. I love you guys so much. I hope everybody has a fabulous night. Go over to mandyperry.com. Get your ass in the group Evolve. I don't think I've ever said go buy my shit. Go get your ass into a group. This is the group. Go get your ass in the group. I did extended payments. Uh, also the, uh, early bird special is going to end on the third, I believe. I think the website says the second, but that was stupid because I did it on over a holiday. So I'm extending it to the third. So, um, so, uh, early bird special goes away the third. People always buy it after the early bird special. So don't be the person who buys it after. Buy it before. Get it before the, the new year special. Yay. I love you guys too. All right. Have a fantastic holiday. I will see you guys soon and I'll see the rest of you in the group. I love you. Happy new years.